Hey, he's Martin Wagner. Hey. We're the Atheist Experience. Get ready to experience it. That, that didn't I, quite work. No, well, you needed to, you know, sort of punch it all that right, Halloween yeah. party stuff. So, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Um, this is a live call-in television program. They'll go ahead and put the number up now. Uh, because while we're normally full to the brim of callers, we're actually not today. You could get in. Yeah, yeah. You, or Steve could still be screening. People, if you're fast. So that's also happening. Oh, oh, there's another one. Dum dum dum. dum. We're yeah. just counting them down. Oh. Anyway, we're live from Austin, Texas. Austin. Where uh, I didn't leave this week was Austin's Comic Con. Yes, that was a big thing that I missed. I did not get to go was, uh, either. And I'm not, I'm not a huge comic guy, but. Well, it was like they had, they had about 50 Star Trek actors there, so I yes. suspect it was a bit more. Well, you only need one. You only need Will Wheaton. Yes. And he was here. So. They, had, but they had Patrick Stewart. They had, like, you know, so uh, it, was, you know, you it was a bit higher end this year. So, uh, I didn't spend that much time no. on alt.sexy bald captains. You're missing out, man, I'm telling you. Oh, God. So what's been going on with you? Did you have something you wanted to? Oh, no, no. Raise? Just, uh, yeah, life is good. Um, can no complaints. So happy to be back. Happy to be here. All right. Remember that I was on today. That's a step up for me. Yeah, that's, that was the funny thing is I showed up and they said, who's on today? And I said, Martin. <laughs> and the only reason I knew that's because I saw you post that you were going to be on. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 have, I have realized that it probably behooves me to actually pay attention to the Atheist Experience webpage on occasion just to make sure. So dates, we talked so. about this in the, in the pre-show while we were streaming before we actually went out live to the world mm -hmm. uh, on cable, but I'll mention it again just because it's, it's one of the handful of things on my schedule real quick. This Thursday I'll be at Texas State University in San Marcos for a debate um, on is belief in the Christian God rational? Um, and then in a week and a half or two weeks, wow, I think it's two weeks, the weekend of November 9th, and 10th and stuff. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's Skepticon. Yeah, uh, it's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, Beth and I will be in Springfield, Missouri for Skepticon, oh, which we're yeah. really looking forward to. Um, then uh, the next thing on my plate after that is a uh, special award dinner thing in December, uh, which I'll talk about when we get a little bit closer to that. Oh, to the actual date. Yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, okay. So are you ready to take some calls? Oh, sure. Why not? Well, let's set a few of them right I could give me. you some reasons why not, especially... We have uh, Johanan and from, oh, you called last week. Hey, don't hang up on me now. Really? Is uh, that, that the really the way you want to start this call? No, no, I just, I'm just joking. All right. Uh, okay, so this is kind of an addendum to last week. I'm going to try and make it relevant. I'm going to try and bring it down to lay-level terms so everyone can understand and on the same page, and I'll try and make it relevant to you Okay. in regards to, say, religion, maybe closer to the end of it. Uh, quick comment. Probably closer um, to the beginning, because... All right. We don't have a two-hour show this week. Yeah. Just, okay. Just one. Okay. So, I argued last time that we're inside of a conscious state, right? That, and I, I, I brought in some extra physics here. I'll bring this all going into the details to bore you or make your eyes glaze over. But there's another one called the delayed choice quantum eraser, which allows experimenters to determine the choice of the experimenter actually determines the properties of the particle. And so, as a result of that. It actually demonstrates there's a mind dependence of the properties out there. Yeah, I don't buy that for now, one second. No, no, I know you don't buy it, and there's good reason not to, because obviously we can't wish the moon away, right? And we can't, we can't uh, say we're going to imagine that there well, are... I don't know that we can't, but I, I don't have any reason to think that we can. Okay, we can't, and the reason we can't, or assuming solipsism is, isn't true, and I don't think anyone here is a solipsist, if it is true that... I mean, in, in the limited context of the quantum eraser experiment, the properties of the particles you measure are mind-dependent on the choice of whether or not you pull the, uh, the blinders up in the experiment, and it causes the particles to take on, or the one property or another, a wave particle, a wave or a particle property, or in the case of the other one, polarization of photons. But what I was getting at, though, is if we have to rule out solipsism and say that the world does not depend on our minds, then the only remaining conclusion is that it's dependent on a larger mind. No. Why would that be? Well, the thing is, is otherwise you could then, you know, wish that spoons could bend and wish that you know, the moon would disappear when you look at it and, and so forth, right? We can't do that. We have limited... No, no, no. no, no it no. could be dependent on no minds. Well, the thing is, is that the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment demonstrates that the particle's properties are dependent on... Yeah, this is a big, long way of saying, hey, you need a god to be able to collapse the waveform. Not interested, don't care, don't buy it. Okay, um, can I give you some quotes? From no, why would I care about quotes? 
Well, these are these are these are the people who've been studying this. That's so. just an appeal to authority. Why would I care yeah. about quotes? Well, I, I'll try to give you the experiment instead. I mean, you, are you see the experiment? You well, say you I, don't is it an experiment that I can replicate and investigate on my own? I will give you a. Um, you can look this up after the show if you want. Um, the experiment that debunked materialism. Look it up online. It's seven minutes long. It's uh, it's on my channel. It's um, something. Lay level accessible stuff, so everyone should be able to understand it. But yeah, it's, lay level doesn't mean useful or interesting. And no, no, I, I have a question. I, I don't know what this gets us. I, I'm a little bit behind on things here. So are you yeah. sort of again? Are, are are we doing kind of the uh, you know brain out of hat kind of argument here? This matrix apologetics thing where it's, it's all yes, but I'm not arguing for this for on philosophic grounds. I'm arguing for it on scientific grounds. I'm saying that because um, Martin may not have watched the last show, but uh, there was an experiment done in. 2007 by Anton Zellinger from uh, Vienna, and he demonstrated that particles do not actually exist before we don't before we look at them. Well, and, right. and then were he, did, was his were his experiments followed up on by incredibly stupid? What were by other uh, scientists? Yep. Were there? I mean, has is, is this in the literature right now? I mean, yeah, it is. Uh, Physics World. There's a couple of them on this. You can look this up in. There's a popular level one on Seed Magazine called the Reality Test, and then in Physics World there is another one that's uh, some. I think it was Mar March or April 2007, which was uh, quantum physics says goodbye to reality. Okay, so let's say that everything that exists is actually, we're, we're all just figments of God's imagination then. So okay. if, if that is the only, if, if we're all products of that mind, then that still sort of uh, implies that there is some kind of material reality or reality in which that mind exists so that it can exist in order to imagine our reality. So then, what would the property argument. of that reality be, and what's even the point? I, so, well, I, like actually, I don't really. This this just seems to get us back to the same kind of problems that mainstream Christian apologists uh, are, find themselves in when they start talking about this God who presumably exists outside of time and space and who is the necessary creator of this universe. You know, there and and then they have to deal with all of the problems of infinite regress that. <coughs> That okay. their position is implying. So. I have some, I have actually thought about this, put some thought into this, and uh, could a couple of answers. This, this actually showed up in a different ring. I had some talk about the simulation hypothesis, which is kind of gets to the same kind of thing. You know, if maybe we're in a conscious state in God's mind, well, is, is God a, a material brain in some other reality or something, right? That's kind of what you're getting at, which is a, a variation of uh, the simulation or even of a, a computer, a material computer in a larger reality. The trouble with this is, and explain what, okay, so there is something called qubits. These are quantum bits, they use them for quantum computers. Qubits have more than one state in the same bit. So, for example, a classical, you open up your hard drive or maybe your brain, let's can, can you, but you open up your hard you, drive. Can you just stop with all, all of right. the explanations and get to why get I to give punch. a rat's punch, ass right. about hypothetical physics stuff? Because yeah, this all sounds right, like it's a terrific, uh, you know, premise for uh, you know a science fiction book or anything. But I, I don't see any way that we can confirm it. I don't see that how it's useful as anything other than a speculation that you can. Okay. How can we confirm it? And. Well, what the hell does it the, mean? And if, I give yeah. you all the, I mean, the thing is, is I, I did to confirm it, and we, we have confirmed the physics for all this. I have to get into all those weird things, and that then, you know, you, you get bored with the explanation. So I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to say that if God's mind is in some material reality, then, or say for that matter, a, a, a computer hard drive, that computer hard drive would have to necessarily be exponentially larger than the size of the known universe because of the amount of information storage it would require. And it, it, it couldn't, it had to be, it had to be qubits at the next level down, or else the, the hard drive would be so vast that it would make no sense to, you know, literally like something, I'm saying something like literally trillions of times the size of our universe. Well, would it have to be? Because uh, after all, it could be a hard drive that is not quite that vast, and our perception of how vast the universe is, it could simply be an illusion programmed into our non-existent well, what no, I was going to argue... Brains by why, why would I give a rat? See, I, 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 in, okay, in, in, I'm going to get the math argument. I get the math objection here. All right, you want to? You probably want to focus more on a religious deity, don't you, Matt? No, no, no I no, want no. to know what's actually true and not just a big long list of things that people are speculating about to fill in the gaps in our knowledge in a way that doesn't actually add anything that is meaningful. Because well, at the end at, of the day, whether we are real or not doesn't matter one bit. 
Okay, well, there's something called the Quantum Randy Challenge. There's something uh, called the button. Disconnect button. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Okay, so when you say when you want to say that something's relevant here, what what, what exactly are you? Because I mean, all all this stuff is experimentally confirmed. Like you can look this up in. in I, I have things. looked up some of this stuff since we last spoke. All right. And in fact, you are overstating the case when you say that all of this stuff is exper experimentally confirmed. There is not scientific consensus on the implications of this, and I find it patently absurd that people are taking mathematical equations and modeling different varieties of possible universes and quantum states and then coming to some conclusion that we are therefore just information in some god's mind. I think that's playing with math. Well, these were, these were experiments, though. I don't give a damn. What difference is it? I'm saying it's not just math. This was actually, you, they had a test. You can do as many experiments as you want, but there is no variable for God. There is no variable for, hey, this is God. How do we plug that into an equation? This is philosophical conjecturing based on quantum physics. Hmm, because that wasn't the conclusions I only got to. Well, well yeah. Just, I'm just saying, I mean, not, not to say that maybe, maybe you got to look at this over again and, you know, come to your own conclusions, but this was, this was not me, some, you know, random so person falling on the I'm not anything. saying it was just you. Didn't I just tell you I went and looked yeah, at stuff up? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Here's my know. question, the same question I asked last week, and we're either, you're either going to answer this or we're done. Okay. And okay. that is, assuming what you say is true and that we are really not real, what difference does that make to any of us? Okay. What can we learn what from if that? I were to bring what is in it? What, how can we get? Well, go ahead. Okay. So, what difference does it make to you? Like, you know, we're real or we're not real? Okay. The interesting thing, and this comes from you can look at Stuart Hammer off on this. Oh this this metaphysics opens up a possibility for an afterlife. Don't care. And this is. Yeah, Don't care. Yeah, that, still, that would be relevant. This is all still, You're still talking about possibilities. This and is everything. all speculation. This is all. I'm, I mean, again, it's. I, I, I saw. You should write a science fiction novel, but I don't say because it would probably be a really good and interesting one. But I don't see any application to our understanding of reality. It's pure and, speculation. And, uh, well, the thing is, if, if you say it's speculation, and this, some people have complained about this before, there is a guy named Sasha Vonger who has the Quantum Randy Challenge up, it's on Archive, and he says that basically anyone who is able to prove realism in quantum mechanics... No, stop, that's shifting, the bird, that's shifting the burden of proof. That, that's, 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 like, that's like the creationists that ask people to prove evolution, and then they set up the criteria by which right. it would be possible to do so. I'm not okay. here to play games I don't give a rat's ass right. about. All right, I won't play that game, I won't play that game. Um, what you I will already ask, did! Though, all, right, all right, okay, I'll, let, me, let me defend myself here. you got 30 seconds. All right, when you ask for theists to prove God, they need to provide the burden of proof. Yes. But the thing is, I'm asking you to prove the existence of matter. The burden of proof is I need hey, to prove dumbass. matter exists. Dumbass, call a physics show, not an atheist show. I don't have to prove matter. You, you do, otherwise, you, you, you need the Nobel Prize. Uh, no, actually, I don't have to prove I matter. Challenge. I don't have to prove matter to you. I'm not a it's physicist. It's falsified. Where you bear the burden of proof is in this cosmic computer slash mind slash God well, that well, Ukraine kind of has to, imagined us into existence I, 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 when you, we don't actually exist. Call so. someone who cares. This is an atheist show. It's not right. a physics Should show. Should I bring religion into this? No, we're not going to bring anything yeah, into this. Make, what, I just said call somebody relevant? who cares. All right. I do, I, the, the, these mind-numbing mental exercises, these masturbatory quantum physics things about possibilities and reality. Uh, I don't care. I, I, sorry, I just really, really, really don't care. Well, we have to live our lives either way, right? So, you yeah. know, that's, and, and my, uh, my thing is, so if, if we're all just Sims, right? I mean, it seems like the world could probably be a better place. Than I mean, unless you, just, unless you can not, not only true. demonstrate that it's actually true and mm -hmm. provide some way to do something about like, some way to make predictions from that, some, some way to make this useful, then it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me if you, if, you, if you claim I'm in the matrix all day long and you've got some math to show that I'm in the matrix, that doesn't matter to me until you can show me the way out. Hmm. Because I'm stuck here dealing with reality on reality's terms, even if you say that reality is not reality. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I just, yeah, it, 
doesn't really offer any utility in how we live our lives, better or worse. So, John in Miami, thanks for waiting through that. Wow. Uh, tell uh, him, uh, Ilya Kirliakin says use RAID technology, and he could store all that hard drive stuff, okay? <laughs> okay. I just wanted to help him out. So, I, you know, I just called in off of Yahoo, and I, uh, you know, I'm not an atheist, but I had a couple of questions. I don't know if that would, you guys are the ones to ask. We're here. You know, it's not I physics. I'm just curious about, is, is it just no God at all? It doesn't matter if it's a, a Zeus or an Apollo or something like that, or is it just, or it could be other things, why, they, why a person is an atheist? Well, the only thing that we can do as atheists is respond to the claims that we get from theists. So if theists tell me a God, a God exists, and then they, you know, we say, okay, well, what do you mean by God? And then we listen to the arguments that they give us, and then we evaluate them and decide whether or not we agree with them. Now, uh, most people, I think, have, uh, you know, with conventional religious beliefs, have this idea of God as some sort of supernatural deity, kind of a superman, a father figure, someone who watches over us and judges our actions and takes care of us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and in, in cases like that, you know, we don't believe because we don't consider the evidence to be compelling. Now, you can take another example. Uh, let's say I meet a guy who is a sun worshiper. You know, he worships the sun. The sun to him is his god. Well, I can look up in the sky on a clear day and I can see his god up there. So in that regard, I say, all right, your god exists. Now, I might not agree with you. I don't necessarily agree that that god is a god. I don't think it, it's divine. I don't think it has any powers. And he may even say, you know, yes, I, it doesn't have any divine powers, but I love the sun, I love it so much that I've decided to make it my God and worship it was, so I don't see any use in that. So it all depends on the uh, definitions of gods that we get from believers, but my experience has been that I haven't heard one that has been backed up by the kind of evidence that I would consider persuasive, and so that's why I'm a non-believer, that's why I'm an atheist. And yeah, a lot they, of atheists might tell you something very similar. They, they fit in a couple different categories. One are, you know, the the various supernatural gods that people offer up as this is what God is, and I don't believe in, in any of those, and I don't see any reason to believe in any of those. And the other one is what Martin's talking about, where something that clearly exists is labeled with the God label, uh, and I don't see the justif justification for doing that. You can certainly do that all day long. You can say this coffee cup is God, the sun is God, <laughs> everything is God, whatever. Um, I just don't see the justification for that. So it's not in that case that I don't believe that it exists, it's that I don't believe there's any good reason to change the label for what you're talking about. Yeah, like a, you know, New Ager is all about you know, the universe. Yeah. That's their, you know, their word for God. So there's no compelling information that makes you, allow you to say, okay, this is a legit storyline or this is a legit god it's just yeah you, no one's proved that to you yet so it doesn't really mean that uh you totally don't believe in god you just haven't found someone to say okay this is uh this no is i, I totally don't believe in god but what it oh, does okay, what, okay. What, what it doesn't mean is that i'm claiming that there are absolutely no gods and that the gods are all absolutely impossible i'm not that's not okay no no i just care that's why i was curious about it because sure. i really just started um getting yeah. some but, yeah, ours so is not a, ours is not a position of absolute certainty. It's it's ju it's a position of disbelief. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So in other words, like if if you're in the Gulf of Mexico and you saw the uh, sea pot, <laughs> then that would be something you would believe with your own eyes. If you saw it, I'm not saying if the Bible told you about it, but if you saw it yourself, then that would say, well, hmm, how did this pot? Did it do it this way? Did it do it that way? Was it a god? Would you believe it was a god, or would you believe it was just uh, uh, earthly well, occurrence? Well, again, that depends on the circumstances, doesn't it? Yeah, we'd yeah. have to we'd have to get kind of specific about it, but I'd have to say it right off the bat that no, I would not believe that it was a god until it was demonstrated that that a god caused this. The fact that matters if I'm standing there and I witness what I what seems to be a sea parting. Okay, I've witnessed well, yeah, an event, and now yeah. I need to actually do some investigation to determine what the cause is. And there's no justification for claiming that a god's responsible until we actually have evidence that a god's responsible. I if we, it could be our, our inability to come up with an explanation doesn't mean that we ha we're justified in saying a god did it. Yeah. Oh, wait, you know, I just thought of something. As you said that, there's a story of the handwriting on the wall in the Bible in Daniel. Mm -hmm. So uh, the king saw, like, just the hand with the finger writing something on the wall, and just the back, he, he saw the back of the hand. There was no body. It was just the hand. Mm -hmm. So if you saw a hand move to see a pot, 
No, I'm not, and I'm not saying, I'm not doing no, this know, to be silly, I'm just, I'm just asking, I just no. thought of that right as you said that, so I'm yeah. saying, okay, maybe like one hand with no body that's huge uh, that moves it. You know, we know, we know what you're saying on here's, the here's, we, get, we've, uh, we've, we get this kind of question a lot. Um, okay. I remember that we had, uh, you know, back when, many, many years ago when Ashley and I were hosting, we had a guy call up and ask, um, you know, a lot of questions along the same lines. It's like, what if you're sitting there in the studio right now and all along the back wall of the studio, this enormous, like, image of a cross suddenly materialized, on, giving us all of these hypothetical scenarios, right? I'm like, look, you know, I would, I'm certainly, you know, willing to uh, accept that I've, you know, that I could be witnessing unusual phenomena at any given time, and then that would that would appear to violate all sorts of laws, and it would cause me to question, you know, how reality worked or whatever, or maybe if there's some sort of higher power that's doing stuff, etc., etc., etc. But from a practical standpoint, stuff like this doesn't happen. Okay. It doesn't. You know, well, it, it just it doesn't. Well, for example, like you know, 9/11, right? Uh, if, uh, if, if, if on 9-11, an enormous disembodied hand had materialized in the sky <laughs> and <laughs> snatched that plane out of the air and set it gently okay. down on the ground and went, no, no, you don't, okay, <laughs> that, that would have been, <laughs> been really impressive, right? That would have been, have you know, more validity. Okay. yeah, that would have like, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? If these kinds of, you know, so what I'm saying, you, you can ask us all That's about, interesting. You, I like that. That's yeah, very you know, but what kind of, you know, all these different, you know, spe hypothetical, miraculous events. If well, you it wasn't really, them, I, like, again, I'm basing yeah. it on a Christian belief system. Sure. It's a story yeah. in the Bible. I know, and, I know, but I'm just uh, saying, you know, quote if, unquote, witnessed it. You, so you can ask, what I, the, the point I'm simply trying to make is you can ask us all day long, you know, how we would react if we witnessed this, that, or the other thing, but, and like I said, until we do, the point is that those things don't really occur to us in our, you know, it's, in it's, our so, lives. So, and it's so also, don't believe in ghosts or aliens no. or anything yeah, like that? So no, and I it's, would need, all, and the, no, and the, the simple thing, I think it's Arthur C. Clarke that pointed out that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So this idea that something happens that is outside the realm of experience, even Martin's example of a hand seemingly picking up a plane and setting it down nice and neat, I can't tell you what that was even after I've witnessed it. It's not until we actually yeah. have a demonstration of evidence that, that identifies the cause and, you know, you can't just... Yeah. You can't just go leaping. So it's just kind of like an earthly phenomenon. Is what you guys yeah, all we would be able to say at that point was that a highly unusual phenomenon just occurred. Yep. Okay. And, uh, and then and then at that point, I'm like, I want to know more. I and plus, learn, yeah. even if that happened, <laughs> and even if people considered that to be uh, a valid, you know, confirmation of God, what the hell kind of God is that? That, <laughs> you know, that what did, that, uh, that uh, offers the plane? You know, that, that would offer some sort of well, half-assed uh, <laughs> confirmation of its existence that people who don't understand skepticism and science would say, oh, yeah, that was God. Uh, and is, he, is he only after converting the gullible? I, you know, that, that's a tough one. I really I believe that uh, when it comes to a uh, person's relationship with God, a lot of people now base it around what church they go to, how big it is, and how much they give, and what they got on deck, but, uh, you know, a true uh, person that develops a relationship, and I'm only speaking from my end of view, uh, develops a relationship with uh, a creator and his son that you believe in, you basically, you learn about what their personality is. The only personality I got to go on is the Bible. So if I believe it's real, you know, in my little pea brain, I like Snow White too, you know, but I don't believe that's real. So, but I read that you know, and I get a sense of some sort of reality to it, and and I actually like this type of a god. If there if there are multiple gods, this is you, the kind of one that like, I like. You, you know like what I the mean? God, if it's true. Which god yeah. do you, is it that you like? The one that the Bible represents? Uh oh yeah yeah yeah. I love I so you I, like I a god the, that uh, the so Jesus uh, Christ. I love the uh, uh, Yahweh Jehovah God. So, I love those, so basically, those you like a god that endorses slavery and that punishes people with original sin? And well, what I look at is that I'm, I, when I read the story, I go a lot more into the thought process than uh, the endorsement of slavery. I want to know why. Like, you guys want to know yeah, why. Yeah, I'd like to know why. Like why, would a God, why would a God yeah. endorse slavery? I mean, if you want to know why, what's the why behind that? Is there any well, circumstances? I, is there any circumstances that could ever make slavery a moral command? 
Well, you know, it, again, it comes down to this whole storyline. It's like trying to uh, explain Moby Dick and uh, saying, oh, that whale was a real jerk, you know. Uh, Look what he did to his leg. You know what I mean? When you really don't so, know. So you're going to you're going to you know what I mean? You're going to duck. You're going to duck the no, justification for slavery. No, by, no, by no. I think I, what he's doing is 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 what I think a great many believers do, which is that you know you you sort of form God into you know the God that you like, and then you stick with that. And the and the the bits in the Bible that this person, I, I kind of acknowledge the bits in the Bible uh, that are unsavory and that are morally dubious, to put it politely, are yeah, so you yeah, just say I yeah. the, 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 those bits don't really matter to you a whole lot. It's the it's the it's what you've gotten out of it and what you sort of turned God into for your right. own purposes. It's okay. Right. Yeah, well we know that believers do that. Believers yeah, make yeah. God in their own image, and it's not an unusual phenomenon. Well, it's not so much as in the own image. It's more, you know, you get a you get a lesson from you know how you 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 think you should be acting, right. and if it's heartfelt, mm -hmm. you know, you can act that way. In other words, if you feel good about stabbing someone in the head with a fork, it's heartfelt, so you're going to do it. But if you feel good about, you know, hey, look at that. Uh, Look at that uh, person who doesn't have a, a, a bit of food. Hey, I say, hey, go with Jesus, but uh, I don't give him anything to eat or I don't give him any money to get something. So, and, again, when you see the, the actions of these, this God, let's say this specific God called Jesus Christ, when you see the specific actions of his and what he did in the book, if you believe it, again, I'm not saying because I, I'm, I, I'm a Christian, I believe it. So I say, okay, well... I like the example this guy's setting. I and, really and don't like the example I don't get. that I but you, see. But you, know, but you notice that what, what there are a great many believers out there, very devout Christians who consider themselves to be people who do believe that sort of thing, and yet they have political views that tell them, well, you know, we shouldn't have welfare for the poor. We shouldn't provide guys, health care. No, 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 no. Let's guys, no, guys no. Are people Christian. are different. They can't be no, Christian. stop. We're not letting you off the hook. I want to no, know. Go ahead. I, I want to know. Ahead. I want to know Political what you. Political and Jesus don't go together. Sorry. Go I, I want to know. You you ducked out of the slavery go thing, ahead, and Martin, Martin let you, and now you're going to the Jesus, no, and you like and you like this guy's character and what he did. Yes. Why would you like somebody? who offers up the, the types of things that are in, for example, the Sermon on the Mount, that encourage victimhood, that tell you to take no thought for the morrow. The, these are utterly irresponsible statements who endorse the Old Testament teachings as somebody who basically comes forward and, and says, look, you are all terrible, wretched people from birth, and you need to believe in me, otherwise you will suffer the consequences. That is not a character that I would consider moral or good. Well, in your eyes, but I endorse. No, 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 not so my I eyes. I endorse what he endorses, so it's it's normal for me to. to you think, you uh, endorse I that. I know his Old Testament. I you know what he's you endorse. To. Okay, then stop yeah, ducking absolutely. the slavery thing. If you're going to endorse what he says, then you're okay with people being born with the penalty of the sins of their ancestors and being destined for hell. You're okay with that. You think that's moral? It's not my position to, to say it's moral. Of course it is. It's exactly yeah, your I, position to say it's no, moral. Why, why can't you say that? You keep what? saying the slavery thing. Didn't he take the uh, Jews out of slavery? <laughs> Well, yeah. but, hey, well, the if, Midianites if, I, a if I save I my cousin from slavery, but in, if I simultaneously endorse slavery, that doesn't do anything to yeah. alleviate the, that position. Saving okay. your favorite people mm -hmm. from slavery is, so, not, is not a testament against slavery when you also specifically say who you can endure, who you can slave, enslave, how much you have to pay for them, the fact that you can beat them as long as they don't die within a couple of days. I mean, I, I just... Yeah, well, that is, that's, uh, that was back the Old Testament stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and, you know, and a lot of that went out the window, though. You've got to understand. So your God stuff. got better? He well, used no, to be he, a dick, he just, but then he, he got better. He, don't, he doesn't take offerings anymore. He doesn't take the sacrifices Well, why anymore. was it necessary to do it in the first place then? I mean, why, why couldn't he, we've had the, uh, you know, it's, if it's the same God well, that's like and the same you set of rules, he could have made all Yes, I do. I do. You do, I know, okay. Yeah. And I, so do you, John. So do you. <laughs> you know, 
you know slavery is wrong and nobody had to tell you otherwise. Yeah, slavery is the minimal thing. Let's talk about uh, cutting people's heads off and putting them on poles and shoving their, shoving yeah. their uh, stakes up their ass. You knew that that's, was wrong, that's a too. That's little worse than slavery. That's what, that's what used to happen to the people who would get, went against him. So, in other words, with, with the understanding of why these things happen, then you understand why it had to happen. So, I mean, no, like, I again, I, well, reading as a novel is a little different than just, you know, cherry-picking slavery. There's a lot worse things, man. They were eating babies. Come on, give me a break. Read the book. I, They're eating babies, <laughs> you know? I, I've read did. the book, which is why I'm baffled that you could endorse it. Mr. Ex-Minister. Yeah. Well, I, you know, like I said, I the like point, the, point I that like I was the trying personality to make earlier, John, of Jesus. I like the love What about thing. the personality of Jesus do you like? Because if you're just going to cherry pick this thing about I, sell your I belongings. Know. I mean, what, what do I like about him? I like that he, uh, he, he uh, cares about the other guy more than himself. I think that's a very good virtue. That's the guy throwing himself on a hand grenade for his buddies in war. You and, know? and what, what does that have to do? Important. What does that have to do with whether or not God is real, or any of the supernatural claims I, are real. We could go back to that. You're right. And, if it and, isn't real, and the that's fact right. that somebody says a good thing is not an right. entire summation of their character. Have you looked at the rest of the things that are in there? I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of good stuff. And like I said, there's slavery. And no, I'm just talking about just go with Jesus. Just go Read with like this an Arnold Schwarzenegger mover, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'm sorry that you don't take your religious beliefs seriously. I did. I which is, I, I, I do. No, I no, you seriously. don't. No, I, no, no. No, you're no something... you don't. I did, and that's why I don't hold them anymore. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, you're just... I actually cared about these things. You just want to chuckle and well, sh wanna, shuffle it I, off I as a novel. I don't want to get an argument with you over then why... Then why did you I'm, call? I just want to answer, you know... Why I believe I like them. You asked me the question, what did I think about him? I said, I like his personality. I think he's a good role model for, for the youth of today. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I but, think but, he's but good. As we, as I think we've... he's good people. I don't know what more so I can say. So you think it's a that. good role model to tell people that they are born bad and that they have to do something to make up for the sins of their ancestors, right? You think that's a good role that model? Doesn't, if that, that sits fine with me. If okay. it doesn't sit uh, fine well. with you, man, I understand that. But it, that sits fine with me. I mean, my whole ancestors were genocide. What do I care? Uh, well, you know? it's not your fault that your ancestors did those I, things. You I, should not I, be paying the penalty. I understand that. What? I understand. But you should, yeah, you shouldn't you, be paying you, the penalty you, for that. This whole under the seventh if generation thing, that's if not your right. dad, If your dad was a murderer, should you be sentenced to prison for that? Well, I don't think you should. Then you, how can you, how can you simultaneously say that you support this idea that people are born with the weight of the sins of the people before them and that that's okay with you. You know, and again, if I, I tell you that it goes back to Cain and Abel, uh, the first uh, uh, murder was Cain, that whole blood lie went bad. That's why the Canaanites needed to be wiped out. All this stuff. I yeah, mean, yeah. I don't want to get into all that John? stuff. John? Because it's stuff that's, you, you, it's like talking like the guy before me with the hard drive and the numbers. It's ridiculous. And, 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 no, and, and no. If what's you don't understand no, it, it's ridiculous. John, you know? John, what's ridiculous is somebody <laughs> attempting to take something that is clearly inhumane and immoral and spin it away as if it, oh, that's just not really that important. It is important. You base, you you base just, that decision around your own understanding. No, I don't. Around the understanding of no, the I don't. Well, and, even if, and even if you did, what would make, what would make that a faulty process? You know, well, my own understanding it, tells me that slavery is wrong. My own understanding tells me that uh, sacking a city and uh, you know, taking 36,000 virgin women to be your rape prize would, is wrong. My own understanding tells me that a great many things that the Bible advocates as moral behaviors are wrong. And so why, why would that alone, just because it's my own understanding, make it an invalid uh, you know, way to uh Oh, I never said it stuff. was invalid. No, no, no. no. I, those are your words. No, I no, never you, said you, were, you, you were critiquing I, Matt's point of view based on the basis well, that it was just his know, understanding. That is an assertion that it's invalid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. It was very interesting talking to you oh, guys. Oh, sure it was. You seem to be very nice, and uh, I appreciate the, uh, the information and the understanding. And... Uh, Good luck with the show, man. I wish you all luck, okay? Take, Thanks, John. Take care, John. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, take it back. You're not more moral than your God. No.
Corey in Schenectady, how are you? Thank you for waiting. Hi, Matt. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. All right, here's my question. How do you know the resurrection of Jesus Christ did not happen? I don't. So you're basing your whole beliefs on reasonable doubt? Um, well, first of all, my whole beliefs aren't necessarily tied to the claim of the resurrection, but uh, the burden of proof is on those who would claim that this actually did happen, just as it is for the existence of Jesus and all the other miracle claims. Um, so yeah, if you want to look at it as reasonable doubt, absolutely. I think that that's justified. I think there's, there's actually uh, not just reasonable doubt, but really good reason to think that it didn't happen, that this is extraordinary supernatural event that, uh, you know, we have no evidence for, uh, it's probably more likely, it's more reasonable that it's not true and that it's a story than that it is true. But it is possible. I don't know. How, how could you demonstrate that it is possible? Yeah. I mean, we don't see, we don't see any reason currently with the understanding of science to think that it's possible for this sort of resurrection what event. Science have to hang, hang on. Hang on. Okay. We don't okay. we don't see any reason based on our current understanding of science to th to see that a resurrection story like this is possible. But the Bible doesn't care about what we know about science and this, the the story doesn't matter because this isn't an appeal to science, it's an appeal to magic. And we definitely don't see any reason to think that magic actually happens. And you would have to demonstrate that there's some well, possible hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a difference between magic and miraculous. I mean, if... No, there's not. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. What's the difference? If David Copperfield... I don't think David Copperfield could come back from the dead. I'm not talking about prestidigitation. I'm talking about magic in the classic sense. Something magical, something supernatural. I, I've been an amateur, quote-unquote, magician my entire life, but I don't do magic. No. It's leisure domain. It's prestidigitation. Yeah. Wait, you've been a magician your whole life and you don't do magic? Yes. You're, 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 do you you're, understand that sometimes words have more than one use? Yeah, where well, you're mistaking stage magic for like Harry Potter style magic, which yes. is what we're talking about. Like if someone, act, if, if it were possible to do that kind of thing where through incantation yes, or spell the, 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 the nature of reality was altered by your own will, you know, if you could uh, say, you know, Expelliarmus and do stuff in that way, and it wasn't illusion. I, yes, I'm talking about Harry yeah. Potter magic, so it's irrelevant to bring up Copperfield. Yeah. But, you know, the, in, in terms of the whole resurrection question, because, you know, my first thing would be, all right, you know, I have two problems with this. First off, well, the, there are well, four... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, I, I was, Can I let Martin finish? Yeah, you have... First off, I'm you have... Guess. You have four conflicting... Not for long. You have four conflicting accounts, first off, in the four different Gospels as to how the re resurrection supposedly went down. So the Holy Book itself isn't really getting the story straight. Second, I have to consider, is this simply an exercise in mythologizing this figure... You know, this, uh, or That's is it more reasonable to assume that at this particular point in history, one human body behaved in a way that no human body had ever behaved before and none had ever had since, did? which is dying, like physically dying, and then actually returning to life after a three-day period? If it did, that would be neat. Yeah. Now, prove that it actually happened, because until well, somebody well, hold does, on, hold on. until somebody does, there's no reason to think it did. Well, either it did or it didn't. Correct. Right. Does that, does that mean guys. does and that mean that it's a 50-50 shot? Does it? I just asked you. I mean, I know we're into Socratic it's method here, but it's your question. No, it does not mean that it, there's a 50-50 shot. Yeah. See, okay. and, and, and another factor to take into account is that these were ancient times, and magical stories were told all the time, and people believed I get that, them. Right? I get that. Yeah. You I know. Get so. That. Uh, Roman uh, legionnaires would hear stories about uh, divine events uh, involving their generals. Uh, you know, an eagle would swoop around the general's horse three times uh, in a circle, all right, all right, and that right. would be a sign that they that, were going to win the. They, they, they believe that stuff. So stuff why that. would uh, why would so why would it be a surprise that here you have supposedly another popular figure, a rabbi in Judea, doing all this stuff, and he gets a, a, a bunch of followers together? And miracle stories are suddenly uh, told about him. Why is that? Why that's not unusual. That's not out of keeping with how people thought back in the in ancient times. So there's even, so many more people think like that now. Pragmatic, you know, possibilities to consider. You know, uh, other than actual magic occurred. Okay. So it's right. it's just a matter of not having enough evidence to believe that it's anything other than a legend, like so many other legends from that time. <coughs> All right. Do you believe it? I believe it with all my heart. Why? Why not? 
See, see? There, there's the difference. You see, we, some we, of us care about evidence and reality, and well, some hold others... Hold on, hold on. There's, there's evidence. I mean... There, what evidence? Well, I, William Lane Craig, he's one of the leading apologists on the historical evidence. Yeah, was he around for the resurrection? Because I don't think so. Well, come, of course yeah. not. Yes. Okay. But, but like I said, either it happened or it didn't. Correct. Correct. And I'm putting my chips on it did. And, and, and why? Listen. What rational reason do you have to make that bet? Because the... The, the apostles of Jesus Christ went from cowards to heroes. They died for their... How do you know that? They, because it says it in the gospel. How I mean, do you know that's true? How do you know it isn't? I, I'm just saying, you're, you're making your bets on stuff, and then when you point to your reasons why, you don't seem to have any good reason to think that those are true either. Yeah. I mean, how do we know that Zeus didn't come down to earth and pregnate a human woman and give birth no, to Heracles? No, that's just... See? I mean, well, well, it, there's no real that, fundamental difference in the that's two what? things. This is where we have to part ways, guys. It was, it's yes, really we have to part now. ways when it comes to who's going to actually base their views on reason and evidence and who's going to say why not. Well, why can't we coexist? Atheist we can coexist. Well, have, have, do you think that I'm out to kill you? <laughs> no, no, of course not. See, yes. we can coexist, but we can coexist. But that doesn't mean that our opinions are on equal footing. And it doesn't mean that we have to be silent about things that we disagree with. And the position of the religion that you've adopted is one that is not demonstrated to be true. It is unreasonable. It is immoral. And I don't think that it should be able to speak but so freely opinion. without being opposed. No, no, this isn't just an opinion, by the way. Um, well, what is it? What it is, is a rational application of skepticism to the available evidence That's and, and this is no it's not just an opinion but I have one that I'm going to share with you if you say it's just my opinion one more time <laughs> well you want to be rude is that your is that your goal to be rude with me do you not understand okay outside of your religious beliefs is there anything else that is this wildly outside the realm of normal that you believe just because of why not? Could you rephrase the question? Sure. Do you believe uh, that the Loch Ness Monster flies around at night dropping off toys to kids? How is that relevant? Uh, do you believe it? How is it relevant? What he's trying to do is Answer, ask... Why I'm would sorry. That is an absurd claim for which there is no good evidence. That's, That's how it's relevant. That's an absurd question. That's an absurd question. Yes. No. Yet you believe that there's an ancient Jewish rabbi zombie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Couldn't take the heat. The point he was trying to get at, if you're still watching and haven't flounced altogether, is that you are selectively allowing yourself to believe irrational things as long as they're in the context of the religion you were brought up in. But then once, once I mention Zeus and Heracles, or once he mentions the flying Loch Ness monster, it's absurd. But that's the whole case. It is absurd. Even when it's within your religion, it's absurd. It's called you... special pleading, and it's a fallacy, yeah. and that's not a matter of opinion. Yeah. Sorry. So, as he's trying to point out, you allow a, an utter lack of skepticism and rational thought as long as it has to do with your religion. Outside of that, so Sam Harris talked about this yeah. in his book. Yeah. It's one it's of the, the reasons faith. why I stand in opposition to religion, because yeah. it encourages a mindset that yeah. destroys the ability to, to distinguish fact from fiction. Yeah, it's like it was Mark in Washington, D.C., thanks for waiting. Yes. How You're are on. you? You're live. This is Matt from Oslo. <laughs> is that all? No. Oh, well. Stay on, because we're tracing the call, and I just want you to make sure that you get all your little crap out. so that we Oh, can... shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, shit's about to go down. Yeah. Anything else? Scared me there. Anything else? Yeah. Did you trace my... <laughs> oh, bored. Mm. John in Jackson, Mississippi, how are you? Hi there, I'm doing good, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for waiting, what do you got? Yeah. Uh, my question's a little bit different for you. I have a question related to blindness and deafness living mm -hmm. in the atheist lifestyle. Um, Wait, blindness and deafness in the atheist right. lifestyle? Right. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll explain it better. Okay. Um, 
Well, my, I'm going to start with my question. My question is, uh, I heard you guys speaking earlier today and about, or it was on the YouTube video about how you need demonstrable evidence for things for you to believe in. Sure. And, um, for example, when you lose enough vision or hearing, your brain doesn't allow you to just not see or hear. It fills in the gap. So you will actually see colors and hear things that aren't there. And I'm at, my question was, how do you demonstrate something like that and if you can't, does that mean that it's not really happening, that, it, that I would be just delusional? What do, you, what do you mean, how do you demonstrate that? I mean, you just made a claim that we know because we've demonstrated and have been able to test it. It's the same, same way we can demonstrate colorblindness. Right. Yeah. So. Well, but what I mean is the areas that I know that I cannot see, I will see someone walking across that area. Well, I mean, there's you know, neurological, I think, explanations for a lot of what you're asking us about. Um, well, I, I I just think you would need to be more specific. I, I'm, yeah, here's 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 a, a a distinction that's important. Also, um, you may have heard the phrase uh, "extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence." Okay. So, um, if you're talking about some sort of like medical event or 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 or, or something similar to that, uh, something to do with the human body doing interesting things, like you say a person loses one sense and then their you know their brains compensate in other ways. You know, uh, maybe a person who loses his sight you know, has more acute hearing, or vice versa, or something like that. But those are things. All right, we, you know, we have, you know, there, there are entire fields of science dedicated to the study of that kind of thing. But you know, yes, it, it, depending upon the nature of the claim, you, the ra- you would, uh, you know, the rational thinker would ask for either more or less evidence, depending upon how unusual the claim is, how much it doesn't seem to comport with what we know about reality. So, okay, so if you were to tell me something like, I had lunch yesterday with my buddy John. Right? I'm not sure. going to ask for mountains of evidence and peer-reviewed papers to prove that you did that. I mean, that's how people have lunch with their friends. What's the big deal? But if, on the other hand, someone were to say to me, yeah, well, yesterday uh, my buddy and John and I were picked up by a UFO and we parked in Low Earth Orbit and had uh, lunch there with a beautiful view of you know, the sun, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then we went to Mars and you know, shopped and then came home. Yeah, now that's different. <laughs> That's, that's where the extraordinary claims, extraordinary evidence would come in. I'd be a little less likely to just take his word on that. So it all depends. Although I'm not, so sure, that, I'm not sure that we're getting to what he's talking about. Uh, well, that's fine. The, the atheism-related question I had was I get a lot of Christians that will um, tell me that God made me that way for his own reasons, and I'm trying to uh, figure out how to respond to a trivialized question, you know, the trivializing my, I guess, disability for their own God. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I've read the question yeah, differently. Um, yeah, I definitely don't think, I definitely don't agree with him. Um, I, I don't, I, I think it's, it may even be a mistake to try to look into it to find some uh, purpose. These things just happen. The, the, you know, this is, the, this is the nature of reality that People are born differently, and that uh, organs and senses fail at different rates, and that accidents happen, and all this other stuff. When you try to find some some broader external purpose that's being imposed on the situation, I, I think you've already made a mistake because there's no reason to think that that's likely. And spending that time looking for one can lead you to find supposed purposes that aren't actually real and true, but they feel like they fit the situation and that can lead to believing all sorts of things that aren't accurate. And then, you know, some, sometimes right. people say that sort of thing too as just kind of an, you know, for the emotional comfort of so, so how does an atheist go about adjusting to that kind of a lifestyle when, when they don't have the religious comfort and, you know, the things like that that other people might have? Um, well, we can't. There's, there's no real, like, one atheist way of doing things and yeah. I think you probably have to... Um, you know, talk to someone who has that sort of situation in their lives to uh, to, to to ask how they dealt with it. I, as a general rule, um, you know, atheists tend to be pragmatists, so they might just look at the situation and say, "Well, I, I have a disability or what have you, and I just need to do what it takes to treat it, and then live my life as being a person with this kind of affliction." Yeah. It's... And then they, they they take a practical result, but they you know, I, I I don't think a lot of them would think that it was healthy to say, you know. I was made this way for a purpose and by some divine entity. I don't yeah, I mean, that. I think the closest that I can come is that um, I'm diabetic um, and have other health issues, but I don't look at my health issues as um, 
I mean, it's just a matter of fact. This is this is the way it is. Now, what am I what am I going to do about it? And to, in, to the extent that I can do some things about some of it, um, I am. And the ones that I can't do anything about, I realize that if I every second that I spend trying to do something or trying to figure out a way to do something for something that I can't do anything about, that's one more second that I didn't get to spend doing something worthwhile and making my life uh, joyful and, and worth living. Okay. I mean, I get what you're saying. I've, I've tried meeting other people in the area that have the similar stuff, and they all, I always ask them, how do you do it? And they all say, if it wasn't for Jesus, I couldn't do it. Yeah, it, and, it, it just makes me sad. It's the yeah. same thing. Because the church the same thing about, about death. We hear the same thing about the fear of death, and that is that, you know, oh, I, I would be terrified of dying and stuff if it weren't for the fact that I knew I was going to go on to live forever in glory with my precious Savior. Um, that's just, uh, first of all, I think it's a terrible position to be in, um, but it's, it's an abdication of personal responsibility. It, is, uh, it sacrifices everything that we know about what it means to be human. It sets up these... Uh, you know, in the case of the afterlife thing, it sets up a model in your head that isn't consistent with what we know about reality and encourages people to not live their life to the best of their ability. I think I could, you could probably see the same thing with, you know, actual disabilities that are, you know, mm -hmm. persistent rather than just dying. Well, it's, it's a kind of indoctrination that essentially tells people to root their sense of happiness and self-worth in the religious belief. And rather than for just facing up to the reality of their lives and deciding, you know, I, I have worth all by myself as who I am, and, uh, you know, I have a life to live and I will live it. I, I have these um, things in my way that, uh, you know, I have these disadvantages, but I'm not going to, but I'm going to acknowledge them and not let them conquer me. Um, if, if instead you program someone to think, well, you know, God made me this way for, and, and I couldn't get through it without Jesus. And to me, yeah, that's 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 just giving them a crutch, in which uh, I don't think is healthy. And I had a Christian one time, you know, sort of concede that point. They're like, "Well, yeah, okay. Well, if religion's a crutch, still, if your leg's broken, don't you use a crutch?" And it's like, "Yes, but the whole idea is that eventually your, your leg gets better, and you don't need the crutch anymore." Yeah. And um, in fact, it's not good to just be on. The, you don't break your leg and think, "I'll just use this for the rest of my life." Because it makes like no, that's not what it's for. So, all right. Well, I appreciate you guys taking my calls. I know you got other crazy cats that's going to be calling me <laughs> later. We Thanks, John. We appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Bye. Bye. Oh man. Will in Hotlanta, how are you? Um. Hey, I'm really good. Cool. Thanks for um, waiting. How are you? Well, I'm alright. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make a point here. Oh, first, I want to give a shout out. I'm a relatively new atheist. I just want to give a shout out to my friend Adam. Next to him. Okay. Um. Anyway, in 1 Corinthians 7, um, 8 through 9, it says, Now to the unmarried and to the widows, I say, it is good for them to be unmarried, as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion, um, NIV. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, I was just thinking, is not basically Paul um, endorsing that it's okay to give in to temptation if if, no. it's, if you're too strong about it, is it saying for it's better to marry than no, no, for no, it with no, passion? No, 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 no. There's there's two temptations here. The the, the tempt. Oh wow! <laughs> Welcome to Sunday school. There's two temptations here that Paul is talking about, and the first is the temptation of the flesh to lead you to sin, and his encouragement that if you cannot resist this, then you should marry is not an encouragement to not resist temptation, because you are no longer being tempted to sin. You have been engaged in holy matrimony, and now your fleshly desires are no longer sin before, because they are made righteous in Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't, isn't the, <laughs> um, as I've been told, anything... No, sin isn't just something that the Bible says that, that doesn't glorify God. Sin is something, supposedly, in anything that does not bring glory to God. So, but if, if having a spouse will distract you from God, then wouldn't that be a sin in itself? Because no. Well, yeah, yes, yes, yes. If if having a spouse would distract you from your duties to God, then yes. But if it would distract you less than not the situation of not having a spouse would distract you, um, then it's better to do that, which is why Paul says it's better to do that. It's like okay. saying, it's like saying, um, 
hey, I really need you to focus on uh, training for the big basketball game, and I really would like you to abstain from having sex with your significant <laughs> other because that is a distraction. Um, but if you just can't avoid it, could you try to maybe only have like oral <laughs> sex once a day instead of these other things because that's less impactful? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, but I think, you know, your question that we have on those, well, why do Christians have such a high regard for marriage? Yeah. When Paul at best gives a very half-hearted endorsement of marriage, uh, as, it's funny, yes, I think that that just comes right back to good old Christian cherry-picking of the Bible that we were talking about earlier, right? Not, they, they not, have to, not, only, not only is he saying that it's, it's not, it's not you, if you can refrain from marriage, yeah. then you're better off. Yeah, but if, if you just if, have if to if do we were, it... If we were all... If we were all if we were all free from sin, as the Bible claims we would be, then why would we still be restricted? Oh, you're not free because, from sin. No. I know, that's what I'm saying, but the Bible says that Jesus died to free us from sin. Oh, uh, yeah, no, 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 that, that just makes you blameless. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, hey, Will, yeah. Will, you Will, can sin, can, but it's Will, okay. okay. Yeah, Will, can you hang on a second? Yes. I'm going to put Will on hold. Hey, Josh? Uh, hello. Yeah, bye. But we just want to let Matt from, uh, you know, know that we're on to him. Thanks for waiting, Will. No problem. All right. So, um... Yeah, so th this thing about marriage, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a little baffled about the marriage sanctity stuff as well. I actually, um, for a wedding one time, did kind of a history of mm -hmm. marriage and the fact that marriage as we see it now is a relatively modern invention. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul was, as you note, generally down on marriage. It was, well, if you really can't help but give in to your base desires, I mm -hmm. guess you can go ahead and get married. But those of, those of you who can both avoid the temptations and mm -hmm. marriage, you guys are doing more for God, yeah. and your mansions mm -hmm. will be, you know, much bigger when you get there. Mm -hmm. but. But, you know, Christianity has a problematic relationship with human sexuality at best, I would say. Yeah. I'd say. But hey, they're putting the credits up. Issues. Well, we got to let you go. Thanks so much. All right, cool. All right, thanks for taking my call. Yes, sure. definitely. All right. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week. Don't forget, uh, for those of you in the Austin area,